All right, so I'm down here in the south, the deep south of West Virginia. My buddy Wade's house, his BGG name is Osprey. You need a game? Go look on BGG for Osprey. He's got just about everything you need. So we decided to take a crack at Cedar Mountain from Stonewall Jackson's Way, the original Avalon Hill, Great Campaigns, American Civil War. Um, we both played this scenario once or twice before, but solo or with somebody else. So we thought we'd give it a crack with uh, the 1.3 rules. And... Not bad for the first turn. We made one boo-boo. We forced marched uh, Bev Robertson's cavalry, and we shouldn't have done that. All right? But uh, he didn't affect anything, unfortunately, because the Union rules were so bad that they couldn't even move past him anyhow. But he did take a bunch of strength losses, so I guess we uh, paid the price for our error by punishing him from a three down to a one. All right, so we tried to get Jackson and Hill off. And Yule, because freaking Lawton and Greg really don't have a role in this game. Although I will admit, in this one, we were able to fight Bayard's Cavalry. And we drew them, drove them out and routed them, as a matter of fact. But that's that's the extent, pretty much, of Lawton and Greg as far as they can go. Um, was it the first Michigan or first Rhode Island Cavalry? Slowed Winder down at the river. But, uh, and once he retreated, Jackson and uh, with, uh, I'm sorry, but... Yule and A.P. Hill were able to get across the, the fords there and start to drive towards Culpeper, which, of course, those of you that played this one, you know that Culpeper is the, the main objective. It's an eight victory point hex. Um, step losses are like minus one or minus two. You only track the Confederate. So whatever damage the Union does, that's minus victory points. Whatever the Confederates does, that's added victory points. And you win by, okay, so Culpepper, you don't necessarily have to take Culpepper. If you have a unit within so many hexes of Culpepper, there's a chart. Let me find that chart. For your victory points, right here. That how many you get for the unit, for the distance and hexes to that unit. All right. And then, of course, the victory schedule is over here. So seven or more points, and it's a Confederate decisive victory. Um, I played it once by myself. He's played it twice, and I think between the two of us all three times, the Confederates have won it. Uh, apparently, when he played it, the Confederates must have got like six straight initiative rolls, so they were halfway across Virginia and into freaking Arizona before the first turn got going for the Union. So, not so this time. Um, we did almost boo-boo by leaving Culpepper wide open with Robertson's cavalry in the area. Uh, but once he were, once we retreated him, that was not, no, there was no effect there. So we got uh, Banks the second core going. Ricketts can't move the first turn, but he can activate this next one. We've got Crawford's. Uh, well, it's one of them. We Crawford's. He's a brigade, I think. Yeah, he's one of the second core brigades. He's he, we got him headed south. We got Banks and the rest of them with Auger and Prince headed south, and then we've got Siegel's. Coming on, Seagull's three divisions are headed down. Or Seagull's got four, I can't tell there. Now he's got Milroy's brigade. I think Milroy's part of second corps. No, he's independent. Okay. So Milroy's come down, and then Seagull with his three divisions are headed towards Cold Cover. So we're, we're probably going to have a fight. Um, I guess it, it, it's initiative role. So uh, depends on who gets them. I mean, if the Confederates were to string together two or three in this next turn, uh, they're all sitting at fatigue level twos except for one unit. Two units, Bayard's Cavalry, and I think Bayard's Cavalry is sitting at four because of a bad combat. We decided we, we did an odd and even on whether they would fight or retreat, and it came up fight. So he did a damn damn on Greg, but Lawton came up and drove him off without taking any combat casualties at all, but Greg got beat up by him. But like I said, those two are useless now, anyhow. So initiative roll is what's going to be the effect for this. This is the end of first turn one. We'll get these... Uh, fatigue markers out from underneath these guys and like I say whoever wins those you know if the confederates get multiple initiatives to start with they'll probably just blow right on up in the uh, they I mean they should just knock Crawford aside I really don't think that uh, Auger and Prince's divisions will give them too much trouble Ricketts will we can get Ricketts activated like I say if the Union gets one good activation early in the in this turn they can get troops down in there all right so we'll update you right now it's a minus two victory points right now so uh, Confederates are losing, I think. Let me see. Yeah, minus two or less is a Union decisive for right now. 
All right, so this fight's going to develop, and we'll video that after the next turn. See you shortly. All right, back to Stonewall Jackson's way here. We just finished the August 9th turn. And what a nightmare of dice rolls it was. All right, so we pushed up here with Jackson, and we had Yule Hill and Winder. And we thought we'd get into the fight here and drive second core out of the way. And as you can see, it was much to no avail. Uh, actually, Pope and his boys put up a heck of a fight right there and just stalled Jackson. Uh, two of the court or two of the divisions just stalled him straight out in front of Culpepper. So as it sits right there, you'll notice we have what 75% of the troops are exhausted. Um, even over here on the card, we have fatigue level fours. I don't think we, I think we might have missed those in the adjustment. They, they only come down to yeah. once. Yeah, so we'll, we'll, we'll adjust those here in a minute. But they're still, regardless, they're all exhausted over there. So I don't know how much serious fighting is going to be. There's only one turn left to play. And we have, right now as it stands, it is a plus five on the victory for the Confederates, which is a Confederate substantive victory. So... I don't know. You get this looks like to me like it's going to be a strength point thing because I don't think that the Confederates are going to. They, there's they don't have enough, pardon the expression. They don't have enough ass in them right now to push to Culpepper. So I think this is going to be a distance thing with the strength point losses. You see, we got two Jacksons with him. Two divisions cut off. Of course, that cavalry meant they activate. Uh, that would be a strength point loss that we go over to the Confederates if we don't get them out of there. So let's we'll see how that works out. Um, Union's got everybody down here. Ricketts is down here. Um, first core of Siegel's down here. So the, like I said, the next turn is going to be, it's just going to be a fight for strength point losses on this. I don't. Th I think Culpepper's out of the question unless some off-the-wall die rolls, which we have had, occur. But you can bet we're going to fight it out until we just can't, until there's no more combat because that's really all that can happen now. All right, so that's pretty much the wrap on the second turn of this. Uh, there'll probably be more details with this uh, this uh, August 10th turn, the final turn of this game. And uh, then we'll see what the numbers say. But like I say, you can tell pretty much almost everybody is exhausted in this game. And we'll adjust those fatigue levels here in a second. All right, as soon as we finish this August 10th turn, we'll get back on here and give you the, the final outcome of this game. See you shortly. All right, we just closed out. The final turn, game turn 10, August 10th, game turn 3, sorry. Um, you can see how good we are, efficient we are with using units to their core or to the end of their limits. Um, actually, we'd probably be changing a few of those here in a second, but we finished the game. So it was a close, it was a Confederate. I'll let you see the list over here. We actually had it to a three point in the three to four column, and that was a Confederate marginal victory. And we decided that. The Union hadn't drawn enough blood, and they needed to win, right? Even though we're both Southern boys. So we went after Jackson. We drove Yule out, which was good. It brought us down to two points, actually. Two, maybe, yeah, two points because of a loss. But then it wasn't enough. We still needed to hit Jackson. So we hit Jackson. We attempted to hit him three times. One failed. Um, one he pushed back, which really didn't hurt us. We had one more chance at it. And... Yeah, you know, I'll just show you the dice. So there's your union roll, and it was a minus uh, one for the union, so it ended up being a, a plus four or a minus four differential. And the union took two strength point casualties there, and that just sent the total back up to a six. So it was a mid-range Confederate victory, substan Confederate substantive victory. But uh, this one played out really good. I, like I said, we've played it three times, and the Confederates have won it all three times. I know the one that I played, the Confederates took Culpepper, so they had a, they had the big victory, the, the decisive one. What were your other two? The other ones, uh, the Union could never bring its entire force to bear, like in this game. We thought the Union was going to win this one. Yeah. And yeah. Just the die rolls. I mean, the die rolls really simulate what could happen in a Civil War battle. You know? We didn't talk, but that's your fog of wars, those die rolls. Because you just never know, you know, what's going to happen. And you know, we talked about this afterwards. And this, it, and we're just using the base rules. We're not even in the advanced rules yet. But this this game, it has balance. I mean, it's 
you know that during 1861 and 1862, the Confederates were the dominant force in the Northern Virginia theater. And everybody knows that in the early years, and we were talking about this a minute ago, that their, their leaders were the more efficient. They were the more combat effective leaders. And this game shows that, but it doesn't show it so misbalanced that you can't possibly win as the Union in this fight, because you could. It could be done. A few better die rolls. Yes. Yeah, that few better die rolls, which, which translates to me as how well your troops fought. If you rolled poor, that means the troops were fighting poor. That's the way I look at it. But yeah, we close this out with, like I say, a Confederate substantive victory. This was a fun, we did this in one day. It, it's three turns, but when you're doing all your activations, plus we're still novices at this rule system here, uh, uh, the base rules. Um, I have played the, the campaign one in this of Solo at Home. Took me It took me a little over a week to play it. But if you haven't played one of these and you can get your hands on one, play it because I'm telling you, you're going to love this system. I felt the first game like this I ever played and I fell in love with it immediately. If I didn't have 300 other darn games to play, I'd be playing these all the time. So, And of course my buddy Wade here, he started playing these and, and he likes it. He's addicted to the system so I know he's going to keep playing along with two others that we have to play the game too. Alright, so that's the end of that. If y'all have any comments about this, hey pop it down there in the, in, in the comment section. Let us know what you thought of this or Maybe we missed something. I'm going to link all three of these together. And if you like this stuff, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, smack that bell, and you'll keep updated on every new video that we shoot on stuff like this. All right, thanks for watching. We'll get something new out soon.